count on that. You know, I would get what I want. Tell me, J.R., which slut are you going to stay with tonight? What difference does it make? Whoever it is, it's got to be more interesting than the slut I'm looking at right now. Larry King Live is brought to you by Posted Products. What did you ever do without them? When the show started and you were kind of background characters, did it start to do well immediately? Was Dallas an immediate hit? No, uh, no, it, it went from like, oh, 69 to, you know, 37 and then up into the 20s. And, and but, they kept changing our nights. We was there ever a chance you'd night. be canceled early? Oh, sure. sure. Yeah, we discussed? didn't know. After the first six shows, we didn't know what was going to happen. Then they picked it up for another six, didn't they? Six. And then finally another 13. You know, it was like, you know. Well, we were on Saturday night, Sunday night, and then when we found the Friday night slot, that was our home. And became the Friday night yeah. niche, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, you know, you got to realize that there was a kind of a recession going on during that period of time, and people couldn't afford to go out. And so that's, I figured that's what sold a lot of tickets for that show. You know, they couldn't go out to a movie and get a babysitter and stuff like that. They had to stay in and watch something, so we were on. And what led to your parts growing? What, what do you think? I think the on? chemistry. Yeah. I, the I, bad I, chemistry or the good chemistry? No, right. yeah, again. no it was good, the bad pure, the, that great chemistry. That scene chemistry. we just saw did not look like two people in love. That was two <laughs> people in hate. Well, they didn't show us in bed in that scene, you see. But I think that's what sort of cemented you know, the public. The public loved to see that. Because usually it was on a daytime soap opera, but this was the evening. And this was two... We were kind of the, uh, the Bickertons. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Why did the public like... I guess like is the, is the right word, J.R.? I they have no them, idea. Right? They liked them. Well, they kind of perversely liked Yeah, the, the, the ladies would like to get him to, to change him, I think. You know how they always like to do that. Oh. And they, yeah, they do. And then when they get them, they don't want them changed, you know. And then the man wanted all the stuff that he got, you know, the ladies and the money and the, the accoutrement. What was he like to play? What? What was he like to play? Oh, he was wonderful. <laughs> Why? Because he just, he got everything. You know, he got all the stuff that men, all the toys, you know, the good-looking women and the cars and the... And the, the townhouses and all that stuff. And, and then he got the wheel and deal. He, I, I call it moguling. He was moguling all the time. <laughs> did you know guys like him? Yes, I did very well. I, I patented this on, on a couple of guys I knew in, in Weatherford, Texas, that I used to work for. My father used to work for. They were oil men. And they had four sons. And the old man was the patriarch. And, and when he died, they all clashed and tried to get the... Uh, it, I don't want to step on anybody's toes at home, but I... I really modeled it after some friends and of mine. Sue Ellen, why did we like her? I think a lot of women could relate to Sue Ellen. Um, she I took found, a lot of crap. Took a lot of crap. Yes, I did. Yeah, she but did. she well, was she the most. Too, you but know. she, I'm talking. She was mm -hmm. the most. See, that's what happened. Um, I, I think she was still the most interesting female on television in the '80s. She just. Because. She went through everything. She was. Uh, a lot of women. I didn't say a word. See, see this is how, this is the magic that happened. You know what, you see what happens. I don't know if it's magical. Anyway, um, she was a survivor. And I think a lot of people in the 80s were going through their own problems, whatever they were, addictions of one kind or another. And they really wanted to find a way to solve the problems and get out the, to the other side. So I got these great cheerleader letters Proposals of marriage, uh, certainly a definite proposal to leave this guy. Uh, therapists would call, they would write letters saying, if you did this, if you did that. Why did incredible. they stay together? Why did well, they oh, I think they loved each they, other, they absolutely. Had to. They, they each had an essence that they needed from each other, you know. I needed yes. to bully her and she needed to be bullied. We'll talk about the incredible uh, drama, that insanity summer of who shot J.R., Bobby's dying and living, how we all live with this show. The show is Dallas. The stars are Larry Hagman and Linda Gray. And Larry uh, now stars in a play directed by Linda, Murder in the First, based on the film. It's now here in Ventura. Hopefully, you're going to be seeing it elsewhere around the country and hopefully in uh, 
New York. We'll also talk about their other work and Larry's liver transplant as well. And we'll be right back. You drove Gary away. And now, Bobby, you tried to bribe Valene. You cheated your friends. You've done everything in your power to get what you wanted. Well, you did it. Congratulations, JR. You are now the Ewing's only son. Mama, I don't want Bobby to leave. You know that. All I know is JR. He's gone. humiliation. You're a drunk and an unfit mother. And I honestly think you've lost your reason. I'm going to call Dr. Rogers. The sooner we have you put away in that sanitarium, the better off you're going to be. Concluding episode, the Who Shot JR episode, was watched by every person on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> what to help those who may have missed, what was the build up to this? Uh, I don't know. What was it? I, I, I slept with her sister. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and she that was she was knocked up, but not by me. I see. It was by somebody else. But we didn't know that until about eighteen shows. Who did later. shoot JR? You know, I forgot. Mary Crosby. Mary, Mary sister, Crosby. Kristen. Bing Crosby's little girl. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and uh, uh, she shot me. Well, we had one scene where we shot we, uh, kind of a take up. We had everybody shoot me because we didn't want, want the press. To <laughs> so we had about every every character, we including the cameraman, come in and shoot me, right? <laughs> and so I put all those scenes together, then coming in and shooting me. And then I had the the uh, the uh, prop man make a vest, and he pumped water through it. And I said, and I took a slug of, of uh, gin and it went like this. And I say, mist. <laughs> and water, and the water came everywhere. out all over the place. It was colored by that. That was at the height of Dallas's fame, right? Yes. Is it not? I mean, oh no, was... no, no. That was no, the second year. But that, that took us over, the, way over yeah, the top. They, they that was us, the yeah. yeah. That was the second, was, second or third was year. Eighty one. Mm -hmm. Was that was was Dallas hard work? No, it was. Oh, it was so much fun. I, it really was. I, I think loved everybody to go loved to go to work. Yeah, yeah. You shot here, right? Yeah. But uh -huh. you'd go yeah. to Dallas for, ex you'd go to Texas months. for exteriors. Two months a yeah. year. We shoot six, half of six here and finish them down there and then shoot another half of six. Yeah, did you have a here. favorite show? Oh. A favorite a show? Favorite yeah, did you have any? Oh. I like the one where I put her in the insane asylum. Oh, you I would. Like he that. always likes that stupid yeah. show. Yeah, that was kind the, of... The, I hate it. How about when you, when, you, when you filmed at South Fork? Right, wasn't it hot and windy? Oh, it, well, I've got, like, funny stories. Barbara Valgettis and I were doing a film in the driveway. It was blacktop. And it was 120-something degrees. And the director said, action, and we just stood there. And he thought we didn't hear him. He said, action, again, nothing happened. Our high heels had gone into the blacktop. It was so hot, it melted the blacktop. <laughs> we were just sitting there, standing there, going... We can't, move. <laughs> we can't move. It was hysterical. And things, you know, the wind and the hair and the lip gloss. I thought, what are they sitting outside in this tornado? Did people weather? take it realistically? Did people call you JR on the street? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 I Sue Ellen for her? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. People are, now, we, when we were watching you, you mentioned if this were done today, were done with faster clips, oh, yeah. the, thing, the action would be much Yeah, faster. none of those long pregnant pauses and looks and so forth. They just, let's go. They'd write three scripts and put it into one. Mm -hmm. Was it tough for both of you to get another career because of this? In other words, do you think there would have been movie roles you might have gotten and didn't get because you were so Sue Ellen? Probably. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Same because me. you're very recognizable as that particular character. And that's the good news, bad news, because Sue Ellen and J.R. will stay with us forever. And that's, that's the good news. 
That's lovely. That you know you've entertained people around the world for all those years. That's, that's a nice thing to have. On this show, Mary Tyler Moore admitted that she had a real thing for Dick Van Dyke. And Ooh. had he not been, had there not been a marriage involved, something might have happened. The same question is now asked of the two of you. Oh. I know she has a thing for me, but I guess so. I mean, then, did you have a... Oh, well, we had a chemistry going. Oh, there was, there was, was a uh, chemistry. Yeah. It's a different than, you know, a, a lust thing. There was always... I mean, nothing always... happened off stage with Mary and Dick. Nor with us. Nor with but, us, no. But we did have... Oh, us, I mean, look, we rehearsed with each other. I mean, we, we, were, we were together. I mean, that was a real family. Patrick and, and Victoria and... Yeah, Linda and I and Charlene and, and, well, it was just, we were together all the time and we enjoyed each other's company. That was the one. And there was great respect. There was this, there was the chemistry. And we really worked very well off camera. Did a lot of guest on. actors go on to do pretty well after appearing in oh, yeah. one or two sure. Dallas's? Oh, sure. Brian Donahue's doing very well. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. He was in the, he was in the He period. was one of the first ones. Yeah, he had a gun to my head in 1978 and I sang <laughs> people. So that was you my sing, least. You want to sing No, 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 no. Well, we maybe they will. Well, let's take a break and come back. We'll be including a lot of your phone calls. They're with us for the full hour. Larry Hagman and Linda Gray. Don't go away.